Welcome. Good morning. Oh, hey, good to see you. I hope you're having a wonderful week. I uh, hear today's fasting prayer, you know, so this way Prince is very sad. <laughs> He's, uh, yeah, Prince? Is it? Okay, uh, but good to see you. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, let's just get started from where we left off. Um, I want to move into the next section, the blueprint. Um, yeah, we are skipping chapter six. Um, but go through it when you can um, from from your notes, the house of God. You can hear me, Nina? No, right? Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, so we'll skip chapter six. Uh, and when, when possible, please go through the chapter six. I'm 100% sure all of you will. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that meant only to you. <laughs> Right. Uh, I hope everybody else online are doing fine. Um, great. So we'll start off with chapter seven. Uh, this this section, the section two, is called God's blueprint, um, and we've we've actually, we've spoken a little bit about what a blueprint is and the importance of it. Um, right. And as I've mentioned, uh, an architect friend of mine, she said that. Uh, you know, they would refer to a blueprint before they start the work and after they finish the day's work, and they keep comparing it to see if it's uh, if it's according to what the blueprint has to say. Uh, and so, when we talk about the local church, uh, God's given us the blueprint. Like He's okay, build my church according to how I'm showing you and how I've showed it to you from my word. Okay, uh, and so there are a lot of images uh, from the New Testament pictures about what a local church should be. But in your PDF or in your hard copy, in your PDF, go to page number 119, page 119. In your hard copy, go to page 175. I hope I'm right. Yeah, page 175. And in your PDF, it's page uh, 119. So there are, uh, if yeah, if you look at look, if you look at that image, there are ten different facets or aspects of uh, you know the God blueprint for the local church. Okay, uh, everybody's looking at it. Yeah. Okay. So from the bride to the house of prayer and worship, to the temple of God. Um, so it says. The local church as his bride, we are his loving. Uh, we are in love with our bridegroom. As a house of prayer, we continue to worship and lift up prayer. As the temple of God, uh, God's it's God's dwelling place among us, and His glory revealed through us. That us is the church. We are His vine and the branches. Um, the lampstand, the body of Christ, the family of God, the pillar of truth, God's chosen people. We are also an army. Um, so these are all the ten different things that we will be learning, uh, you know, in this section of as God's blueprint. Okay, um, how are we to be as the vine and the branches, as the temple of God? What has He called us to be? So, um, I, you guys, are with me, right? Okay. So blueprint is a guide for, uh, you know, as we look at, we keep referring to this, His Word as what the blueprint is for the local church, and uh, we'll see how we can build it. Okay. Are you all with me? Um, so let's look at um, the scripture uh, in First Corinthians chapter three, verse ten to fifteen. First Corinthians, we're going back to your notes, um, page number forty-eight in your PDF. Page seventy-four. Go ahead, read it. Yeah. 10 to 15, yes. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master, master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, 
because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. Thank you. Uh, let's go through the message version of it as well, the next section. Can someone else read that uh, section, please? Yeah, it's just the section below it. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to, 10 to 15. Using the gift gift God gave me as good architect, I designed blueprints. Apollos is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there is only one foundation, the one already laid, Jesus Christ. Take particular care in picking out your building materials. Eventually, there is going to be an inspection. If you use cheap or inferior materials, you will be found out. The inspection will be thorough and rigorous. You won't get by with the thing. Uh, if your work passes inspection, fine. If it doesn't, your part of the building will be torn out and started over. But you won't be torn out. You'll survive, but just barely. Awesome. OK, thank you. Thanks, Ren. Thanks, Anand. Uh, so that section, it says, be careful how you build and what you build with. Okay. Uh, in other words, uh, it's. I think we can all build, uh, and but we have two options. We can build the way we want to, or we can pay attention to God's blueprint and pay, uh, build according to His plan. Uh, you know, His purposes and whatnot. Um, so we can choose the carnal way lean on our own understanding, lean on our wisdom, lean on our experiences, uh, lean on what we've learned from other friends and whatnot. Uh, or we can just continue to lean on the Holy Spirit and what God has to say. Uh, and so he continues to speak to us, isn't it? Uh, God spoke to Moses. He gave the blueprint to him right when he was up there in the mountains for 40 days, 40 nights. He says everything in detail from the colors to the measurements to the height, everything. That was the blueprint that he gave. And then Moses takes that and gives it to the people of Israel. right? And then, OK, now you build it according to this. Uh, same thing with Noah. Right? God just didn't say, go build an ark. <laughs> right? He gave uh, the specifications. Um, the, in, the things that is important, he gave specifications. right? Uh, Noah's ark had to be pitched with tar, basically, right? from the outside and, and the inside. The King James Version will say, from within and without. That means inside and outside, pitch it with tar. Um, and for the Ark of the Covenant, he say pitch it with gold inside and out, right? Within and without. Uh, so anytime you, you, you see God giving details, uh, I say this uh, many times, and please forgive me for being very repetitive. But anytime God gives a detail, uh, use this color, use this specific uh, you know, height or size, you need to ask why. Right, of all the numbers, of all the colors that's available, right? Uh, you know, there are colors that exist in his kingdom that we have we are not aware of. You with me, right? Right. Just think about it, because, uh, so for example, if I were to send a message from my phone to your phone, um, how does a message get transmitted? Through internet. Okay. Okay. Through the what? A wave. Yes, you're almost there. 50% uh, of the answer is correct. If, yeah, but it goes to satellite, but how it goes? Wave. But what is that wave called? Not infrared. Uh, Ravali says infrared. Yeah, it's part of it. See, it all comes under this one spectrum called the electromagnetic waves. Isn't it? So it's, yeah, so the thing is, so in that electromagnetic wave, if you pull up an image of that on Google Images, it's a huge spectrum, right? And in that spectrum, a part of that fre uh, frequency spectrum is infrared. A part of that is a certain wave. A part of that is a light wave. A part of that is a sound wave. And the spectrum is huge. And of that small spectrum, you get certain colors, the lights that we see. 
but he sees beyond right you, you get what i'm saying isn't it and so anytime he's so specific uh, we need to ask why. And if he's given us the blueprint on how to build his church, uh, how more careful uh, and cautious should we be, right? Uh, to treat to treat it with care, basically. Uh, to treat it with the reverence. This is your plan. Uh, if How many of you uh, get irritated if someone messes up with your plan? Yeah. <laughs> the mother speaks. <laughs> Yeah. Frustrated, like if someone, maybe not intentionally, but unintentionally as well, isn't it? If someone, some, if so, like I said, uh, I mean, I can get irritated very easily. <laughs> uh, for example, if I've planned my day out, this is my plan. Uh, you know, I'm going to wake up at so and so time. I'm going to go do this thing, Bible college, come back, uh, whatever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> uh i like to be, i don't know i try to be flexible flexible with my uh the day schedule and uh but i think i'm very rigid <laughs> so if if something moves and say if i plan to go there to the gym or whatever at so and so time if that doesn't happen i get irritated uh, i mean but then i'll deal with it later but then you know the point is i think we all have a plan and if, if someone comes and tells us like okay do according to what i tell you to do but i plan this first you see, that's a reaction, isn't it? Um, but how much more, again, I'm coming back to that point, how much more careful should we be when it comes to treating God's plan? Right? We we like the idea of following his plan. Oh, it's, a, it's a good idea, Sarji. Correct, no? It's, like, it's a good idea, Sarji. I will follow everything what you... You know, that, again, what the Israelites told uh, Moses is uh, they saw the whole mountain on fire, they got very scared and they said, uh, Moses, you go talk to God yourself and we'll, and you come and tell us what to do. We will do everything what you tell us to do. They were lying because they did not do everything what they were told to do. <laughs> uh, so, and we are very much like them. We are not any different. Okay, We like the idea of following Jesus Christ. We like the idea of being disciplined as his disciple. We like the idea of all of this. But then when it comes to the actual practicals, uh <laughs> it's like oh okay we lean on our past experiences like we we lean on we lean on our past successes as well okay last year i did this theme we planned this we did this game it is going to happen again why should i ask god you with me right um so be careful how you build it and what you build it with Okay, so I uh, want to just look at the scriptures one more time and we'll move on. Uh, using the gift God gave me as a good architect. See the choice of words there. I designed blueprints. Apollos is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember here there is only one foundation and the one that already laid is Jesus Christ. So he's using imagery, like metaphorical uh, analogies, right? Um so take particular care in picking out your building materials. <laughs> Eventually, there is going to be an inspection. That means there's going to be a survey, an inspection. OK. Yeah. But we all do what we have to do just to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. That's Isn't it? Uh, you know, you've run the race. You've kept the faith. That's what you want to hear. That's kind of a part of an inspection, <laughs> isn't it? Um, so yeah, I, that's the foundation of everything that we want to discuss uh, in this section is that we treat his plan with care, we treat his plan with love, we treat his plan with uh, absolute cautious, with the fear of God, right? Uh, and um, you know, most most of us like to be in the place of like, wow, Moses got this blueprint from God, and then he gave it. But we've all been given the same responsibility now. Are you with me? Because of what Jesus has done on the cross, we all have that immense privilege and immense honor to carry God's plan and to give it, you know, and to get people to do this and to do it together. And um, and and so I really hope that that we feel honored, you know, that we feel absolutely privileged to see what God has entrusted us with, entrusted the people that, you know, that we are leading or that you will be leading in church. Okay. All good, no? 
All right, let's go to chapter eight. So we'll con we'll just go a little bit more deeper. The local church as the body of Christ. Local church as the body of Christ. Any questions, any thoughts so far? Okay. So Colossians chapter one, verse 18, it says, and he is the head of the body, the church. Okay, so he is the head of the body, comma, very important comma that is, okay. The church, comma, who is the beginning, comma, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence, okay. And he is the head, who is the head? Francis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And he is the head of the body, the church. Uh, who's the church? We are the church. <laughs> right, okay, so uh, tell me, uh, we all we don't need to be a medical student for this, but how important is the head for the body? Can't see. Can't do anything. Okay. We are dead, okay. Huh? <laughs> what happens? Hmm, but I didn't ask mine. Specifically. Yeah, yeah. How important is your mind to your body? <laughs> how important is your how important is the head to a body? Pretty important, isn't it? Uh we, you don't have to go through 10 years of medical school to say that it's, uh, isn't it? One of the first things, like even if we don't wear anything uh, heavy material to cover us, we wear a helmet <laughs> riding, isn't it? First thing to protect our head. Head is important, right? Uh, if a kid is falling something, you go to catch the head support, isn't it? Um, but what happens? Uh, why is it so important? I remember a response from a student last year when I was teaching this course. She said, the brain is over there. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it tells us what to do, isn't it? The brain sends the signal. Uh, brain is in the head. It tells what to do, which hand to move up and down like this, isn't it? Um, so it's pretty important. In, I think in many cases, uh, simple terms, it says it gives direction. It it guides, isn't it? It tells you where to turn. What <laughs> this is joke. Uh, I tell about my wife is I may be the head of the family, you know, uh, but she is the neck. <laughs> she turns me. <laughs> it doesn't care. It doesn't matter if I'm the head. <laughs> She's the neck, you know. <laughs> she tells me where to look or to do. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. Do you remember the time in First Samuel chapter four uh, when Philistines take capture the Ark of the Covenant and the news is given to uh, Eli, the priest? He falls down and he breaks his neck, isn't it? Um, so, in the last verse of that chapter, it, it says the glory of God is departed, and the daughter-in-law of Eli names his her son Ichabod, which means the glory has departed. Glory has departed. And so it's a sign. Uh, it's a sign. It says when the glory of God leaves, we lose headship. Understood? Eli, Eli fell down and broke his neck and he died. Um, right? So when glory of God leaves or departs, we lose headship. And so, and you know what I'm saying, right? Um, so headship uh, or the head in general is very important to our body because it directs, it gives us uh, direction, guidance, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So let's look at the section there. As his body, our life and identity flows from him. Okay. Um, Acts chapter 17 was 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. Uh, in him we live. Uh, we move and we have our being, okay? So now suddenly this verse makes a very different, uh, paints a very different image. You know, because he is the head, we are in him, we can move, we, we live, and we breathe, isn't it? 
um, it makes sense otherwise also, but then it gives a different perspective, a different shape uh, now. And so uh, what can we take away from this is our life and identity flows from him. Uh, those are two very important things. And another important part in that just sentence is the identity. Um, because a, there can be so many other things that you can identify as, uh, or your identity can come from whatever. It can come from your insecurities. It can come from your failures. It can come from your success. You can identify yourself as your profession by your careers, uh, et cetera, et cetera, isn't it? Like uh, I'm a batsman, I'm a cricketer, I'm a footballer, I'm a musician, I'm a singer, songwriter, technician, I'm a software engineer. Uh, I do absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know what? Uh, so there are a lot of things in this world that you can identify yourself as, but are those, are those your identity? Right, um, but or you need to ask yourself this question. As it's very important as leaders, as ministers of God, as people of God, uh, what is your identity, or who is your identity? Where does your identity flow from? Does it come from Jesus? Do you identify yourself in Him? Right. Uh, we have this another APC publication that's called uh, "Who We Are in Christ Is Who We Are." Right. Who we are in Christ is who we are. That means it's telling you what your identity is. So as his body, our life and identity flows from him. Okay, And so we are encouraged to pursue intimacy uh, with him, to get to know him well. And as his body, we represent Jesus, we reveal Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. Someone read it, please. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. And he and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all the things to the church, mm. which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Awesome, isn't it? Again, so and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him. Who fills all in all? Uh, that is such a powerful verse and so, so, so powerful choice of words. But let me see if I can find. Um, I just want to share this image. Oh, not everybody's online, right? But that's fine. Um, okay, I'll give you a minute. Have you seen this image? It's not fully relevant to what we're talking about, but... Uh, <laughs> okay. You can put me on mute immediately. Can see? Yeah. Um, okay, Francis. <laughs> no, this is not. So, uh, someone has done this brilliant work of um, putting this chart together. And what you're looking at is every verse that is linked to another verse, like a cross reference in the Bible. Okay, and so what you see down there, those white things, that's from all the chapters in the Bible, from Genesis 1 to Revelation. And the longest line down you see, that lengthy one, that's Psalm 119. Um, and so everything that you see is a verse that is connected to another verse, like a cross reference. Um, it, it goes on to say that Bi Bible is the most, what do I say, uh, like the hyperlinked book in, in the world. A hyperlink, like you know, it's connected from, uh, and there are at least 64,000 cross references. 64,000 cross references that means one verse is testifying to another verse. Are you with me? Uh, I mean, think about it, guys. The book that has been written by so many different authors across hundreds and thousands of years, and it is connected. Isn't it? And uh, if this is not blue, God's blueprint, I don't know what is. Um, 
and I'm very grateful to people who put this together. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. But anyways, we'll come back to the point now. So I'll <laughs> I'll, share, I'll share that link with you. Wait, 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 hold on. Um, let me share that. It's it's a very good article for your us to read. Um, I'm sharing that in the chat section. So that image is there. Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, Nina, is that a question or a statement? Some light on the work that endures or work which is burned? Uh, can you elaborate on that question, please? Uh, some light on the work that endures of and work which is burned? Um, are the speakers on? OK. Uh, when we say, can you hear me? Yes. When we say, when we talk about, I mean, that passage which said that you built with the right, the right material, right? Yes. And so it's also talking about uh, the work which endures and the work which will be burned. So any example, like a little more specific about that as is to what really doesn't work, I mean, which is burned. And uh, yes, it says that what is built through the spirit of God and the word. Right. Then we will have a work that is approved. But uh, fleshly wisdom, clever marketing. So uh, that would mean what exactly? So I, again, it just comes down to, see, all of that is good, isn't it? Like you need uh, like marketing. Uh, for example, if you put all people's church on Google, uh, you will find and you will come across all our different locations. Um, that is, in a way, that we are putting ourselves out there. Uh, having said that, we use the tools of this day and age. And I think yesterday, in mentoring, our pastor addressed that, the importance of technology uh, and whatnot. But only dependent on that uh, is not the right thing to do, would not be the right thing to do. Um, and so a, a primary response uh, a priority should always be to seeking God, uh, you know, his will, his direction, his guidance, um, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, like anything can, uh, for example, another example that I can think of, uh, Nina, in context of worship is we can make a church all about music and lights, uh, right? Uh, good sound and whatnot. But all of those are wonderful tools, magnificent tools that we need in this day and age, like, you know, without technology, I cannot have this conversation with you. Uh, but, you know, just being fully dependent only on technology and not leaning on what God has to do or what God has to say and direct. Um, so that's, um, I think that's what God is, you know, kind of referring to or what the scripture is talking about is be careful how you build it and what you build it with. Um, and not forgetting that the foundation of everything is Jesus Christ, and we have one foundation. Um, so whatever you build, build on that foundation. Don't deviate. Don't don't add anything to it. Don't take a, a, anything to it. Yes, uh, there would be a lot of ministries that appear to be <clears throat> sorry successful and big and all of that. So yes. it need not necessarily mean that. Can we say that it does not necessarily mean that it's really being built in the right way? I mean, we obviously we can't generalize. Yes. Is there what would be the dividing line? Can we say? Does it mean that you know are people really growing? And yeah. uh, will that be the mark, or uh, you know, there is some. There are a lot of places where there is a huge number of people. Yes. And maybe they're just going in groups. I don't know. Oh, I don't really know what exactly they're receiving or picking or whatever i mean yeah. so can that be the dividing line that okay, yeah so or, yeah that's right yeah uh i mean one of the ways that you know that we've been told that how we can gauge a, a tree is by the fruit isn't it um and 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 not and not gauging the fruit based on just one season uh is it being is, is the fruit consistent uh, throughout the seasons uh you know and so when you um 
now when you think of fruit a fruit can be bitter fruit can be sour fruit can be ripe a fruit can be uh, raw raw isn't it a fruit can be seasonal there are some fruits that are available throughout every season uh, through through the year isn't it and so all these things uh, will, will come to my mind and this is one of the ways that and i like i uh, what, what do i say i i know I've, I've seen enough in life i think to just let other ministries do what they have to do and i you know just focus on what we have to do but then it is very important to have the wisdom uh, of to gauge ministry by their fruits uh, because just because something is big and grow, you know growing uh, it can be seen as the fruit but is it is the fruit ripe is the fruit sour is the fruit sweet uh you know and is that fruit consistent in every season like is it is it lasting you know so and there are you know, there are men of god women of god who've been consistent uh you know steadfast is the right word i should say who've been steadfast in their faith over the years they are not just good men of god great men of god in one year right there are books called generals of god why are they called as generals because they've been consistent uh, in their walk with god for decades and that's the fruit you can gauge by and so i think you know that you, that's one of the things you can look at is the longevity of their faithfulness um and their fruit yeah okay all right so just coming back to that point uh, page 49 in your pdfs is as his body we represent jesus and we reveal jesus uh reveal comes again we get the word revelation from the word reveal we get the word reveal from this word called unveiling veil unveil re revelation right um so unveiling is if you've seen women from the middle east or you know even the hot summer days they cover their faces with a veil isn't it and removing that is unveiling that means they're revealing a revelation is happening isn't it so uh, how well do we reveal jesus are we revealing jesus are we unveiling the wonder of who jesus is okay so as a church um so uh, in gospel of uh, sorry of one john in the book of one john he at least mentions as he is that means as jesus be a certain way reveal him a certain way right so he mentioned seven times so walk in the light as he is light as Jesus is light, walk as He walked, uh, see Him as He is, purify ourselves as He is pure, uh, right? uh, practice righteousness as He is righteous, love as He loved and commanded us to love, as He is, so are we in this world. Um, yeah, I think uh, so. Let's do everything that we can uh, in us, uh, you know. In a Christian walk with God, that we can reveal Jesus to the people around us, um, as one of those uh, statements, old statement says, "Be the fifth gospel to the person." Uh, you will be the your life will be the only gospel that the other person might ever read. You know, so uh, reveal Jesus to other people, uh, represent Jesus. And all of these statements and sentences sounds nice in this class setting, in this Bible college setting. Is like, oh, be the fifth gospel. Yes, sir. you know, all of that. You know um again like i said we like the idea of it i want to be the fifth gospel uh you know are we pursuing that intentionally a pursuit meaning of pursuit is being very intentional i'm pursuing this thing in my career i'm pursuing you know medicine i'm pursuing engineering etc it's you're being very intentional about what you want to pursue uh is any of this in you know are you being intentional about any of this is a very important question don't just let it be an idea guys okay um any questions any other questions the fifth so uh, so the rin's question is what do i mean by fifth gospel so uh francis of assisi have you heard of him uh, francis of assisi he said preach the gospel at all times and if necessary use words what do I mean? What he meant by that is preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. That means let your life preach the gospel, live, you know, and then if necessary, use words. And so that's what I meant by a fifth gospel is your life uh, will be the only gospel that the other unbelievers will ever get to read. Understood? Huh? 
<laughs> someone go to the canteen get one cup of coffee with some six sashes of sugar in it please give it to rin okay so <laughs> matthew <laughs> luke john one <laughs> after you uh... yeah so the point is you can't call yourself that you have to live a life that's worthy of that calling no? so <laughs> That's a different gospel altogether, bro. Gospel of Instagram. <laughs> okay. Um, so encourage one another to live a, a life like Jesus would. Uh, have you heard this old uh, Sunday school song? Your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Yeah? I love that song, dude. Sixth standard, I learned it. I'll never forget it. Walk not in darkness. Okay, uh, next section. As his body, we are his hands and feet. We do his will. Uh, the church is the instrument to execute Christ's purpose. Uh, do you remember that video we saw of uh, uh, the uh, Ray Hughes, him talking to the guitar, I mean, singing into the guitar, uh, and the guitar responding, uh, isn't it? So uh, the guitar, the instrument was responding to the voice to his voice. Uh, and so when we say that we are his, the church is the instrument that executes uh, Christ's purpose, how much in tune are we with heaven uh, is very important, isn't it? Uh, you know, we can talk about just the wonderful life of Jesus uh, over and over, and it still won't be enough because he lived such a beautiful life. Uh, everything that he did, if you read, just read through the Gospel of John, uh, time and time again, he said, uh, "I don't. I have. I have not come to do my own will, but my Father's will. What I teach is not my own, but my Father's teaching." Right? Uh, everything in everything he did, he honored the Father. Just think about the humility of Jesus. He is the Son of God, fully God, fully man. He could have very easily said, "I've come to do my own will. This is my own teaching." Isn't it? And he would just humble himself, um, just to do, uh, you know, the will, the will of the Father, to say what the Father would want him to say, to do what the Father would want him to do. Uh, are we his hands and his feet? Uh, are we okay to do his will? Again, we like the idea of it, <laughs> right? So, as his body, we are his hands and feet. Um, John chapter twenty, verse twenty-one. It says. So Jesus said to them, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. What a privilege. As the Father sent me, I also send you. And so, uh, again, can we again be like Jesus uh, as, as our standard? As his body, we are in relationship with one another. I'm just going a little fast uh, because of time. As his body, we are in relationship with one another. Okay, um, so to summarize the passage of Christ's scripture, First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse 20, twelve to twenty-seven, uh, it simply says, "Each and every one of you are important. Each and every one of you are important, um, right? No one can. Uh, there are so many things that uh, I'm I cannot do what Prince or Rin can do, and there are things that they cannot do what which I can." Right, and that's where the strengths and the weaknesses, uh, when we come together, our weaknesses are handled by another person. Is like, okay, so hey, you're weak at that, no problem, because I got this, isn't it? Um, that's, and I've observed this last year, this year is when we had this songwriting project, uh, is we split ourselves into five or uh, five groups with each group of six, maybe. Uh, we did a survey before we split them into groups. We asked, okay, uh, what are your strengths and weakness? What, what are your thoughts about songwriting? They said, uh, you know, I'm okay with lyrics, but I don't get any melody. I can't think of a melody. And the other person would say, I can get melody, but it, I, I can't write poetically. I don't know the chord progression, uh, you know, things like that. But 
the end result of that when they all come together i said okay you know at least from the group that i was in i could see how others weaknesses was overshadowed by others strengths because if, right, at the end of it you just can't look at a person's weakness that was not seen at all because you come together as a collective all you can see is each other's strengths are you with me right uh, all you can see is each other's strengths is like uh, and that's a beautiful thing and um, and that's a beauty of us coming together as a church is that uh, we realize that we need one another that's why we have the ushering team uh, there are those who can usher people in really well they love to serve well that's why we have the children's ministry the youth ministry they have a burden they have a calling they're good at that worship ministry uh, etc etc isn't it uh, we have 19 different teams uh, teams at apc that to make one sunday service happen 19 different teams that means people are good at what they do you know and that's why they are serving there and so uh, that's the summary and the gist of uh, this whole passage is that uh, everybody is important. Every All of us are needed. Okay, um, So let's just continue looking at the bottom of that page. The body has many members. We are different in terms of role and function in the body. We are not all same. Okay, We are not all same. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. Right? <laughs> That's why we call uh, unity in diversity. There is unity in diversification. Most of us misunderstand unity for uniformity. There's a difference, right? There's a difference between unity and uniformity. So we look at the topic of unity as uniformity. Um, so let's say, for example, atheists would bring up this uh, argument stating, okay, uh, if it's the word of God, why all different four gospels are so different? Right. When you read the gospels, you see, okay, hey, this there's a beautiful unity in there. Okay, it's, it's speaking cohesively, uh, but it was still written by four different people. So unity is not uniformity, right? Just because we wear a school uniform and go to school, everybody don't look the same. The uniform is the same. Isn't it? But still, uh, individuals are very different uh, characters. Some are hyper, some are not. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so, practical ways uh, a local church can implement this is from the first point is teach believers to see their identity in Jesus. It all comes down to this one point called teaching. Right, teaching and being an example. Uh, you're, if you're leading a church, if this is what you want them to be, God has told us to uh, said that, okay, your identity should flow from me. So teach them on that. Right, You empower them. And, uh, and so as his body, we represent Jesus and we reveal Jesus. How do we do that? Get believers to focus on revealing Jesus by demonstrating his love, compassion, forgiveness, power, and authority wherever they go. Again, it comes down to teaching because the third point says that teach believers to listen to his directives in real practical ways um, so I just want to pause at that section guys and you can look at the last section for challenges to be prepared for there are some cultural challenges uh, a, a, a lot more than cultural challenges you'll come across in your churches if you're leading a church if you plant a church um, right if you're if you're from a certain ethnic group uh, be careful not to be focused only on your ethnicity. A group of people, you know, that uh, was like, oh, okay, I am from Andhra, so I'm only going to focus on people who are from Andhra and forget people who are from Kerala because they are from God's own country. They can take care of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so cultural background. So a church can have, and it needs to, it needs to have people from all different backgrounds and cultures and whatnot. It's very important as a leader specifically that you show no partiality, right? And you treat them all as one, right? All the same, yes. And another challenge that you might face is there can be someone who donates or gives a lot of offering to the church. Okay, Pastor, I'm going to give you one crore uh, offering for you. Put me on the deacon board. <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, those are all challenges. And this is where your your character, your integrity, all of that will be tested. And it has to be tested, isn't it? Uh, it has to be tested. Let's put on cross 
That's so nice. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> So these are all the challenges to be prepared for. If you are in ministry, don't expect uh, like a smooth ride. It's not a walk in the park. It's a walk in the park, but it's like Jurassic Park. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Uh, yeah. And in everything that we've discussed, don't forget that this is God's idea, God's heart. Throughout the section, you know, one thing that we should never forget is that everything is God's idea. Uh, this is his uh, his heart, and it's very important for us to lean into him and to see what he's doing. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for joining. We will not have the next hour because I have to leave. I'm needed at home, um, but we'll meet again next week. Okay. Thanks for joining. Take care, guys.